Hello, <clears throat> Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 31st of 2017. You may, <clears throat> you may notice things look a little bit different again. Uh, let me cover that first. Uh, my lease uh, just came up. I just signed my new lease. Uh, every every year they increase the the rent amount uh, I think it was last year <clears throat> for the first time in, in addition to a big rent increase they started charging us for the first time for water use gas uh, trash I forget what all uh, the gas for you, this is an all-electric apartment complex. Uh, the gas is for the water heater, which is located, the boiler, which is located down by the office, and they pump the water all the way, hot water, all through the parking lot. So each, each year they increase the, uh, the rent. And... Uh, For the last few years, um, I haven't been getting a uh, increase from Social Security. I think this year it was, or is going to be, or well, I guess it's here. We're in the new year. I think it was like 0.5 percent or something, rather. But uh, the government raised up the amount that that we pay into Medicare for Medicare each month. And there was something else, and actually, I, I, at the time I did the calculations, I thought I would be getting a dollar extra uh, each month. Uh, actually, when I looked closer at it, with the things that were raised by the uh, government, Medicare, Medicare, yeah, Medicare. Actually, I stayed the same, didn't get any increase. My ex-wife lives next door with my grown son, and she is also on Social Security, of course, and uh, she, you know, doesn't get any increase. Um, so, we've, the last couple of years or whatever, we've talked about uh, them moving in over here since my grandson moved out, and this is a uh, two bedroom and two bathroom apartment we've talked about it I haven't been real they especially my son has been interested in in making the move over here I haven't been real keen on it uh, I just like I don't like drama I don't like stress I like my privacy uh There's a lot of little things that that would bug me. They, they have a cat, and you know I like a cat. You've, we, you know, I had I have two that are outside all the time, but I had one here that my grandson took. Uh, but I don't like having a cat litter box. Uh, also, their cat uh, will bite you sometimes not trying to hurt you but if it doesn't watch if you try to move it or something or whatever it will try to uh, it will try to bite you to stop you from doing something it also has some kind of a hair condition that kind of goes through it's kind of gross looking certain time of the year and then in, when it it moves beyond that and then it's back normal looking it really is a cat that likes to be loved and whatever I don't really I don't it, it, I don't like that cat so a whole bunch of factors, but we've decided to go ahead. Uh, her lease will be up in, starting March 1st, I pay the new $750 a month rent, plus those other water, gas, trash, and those things. And uh, their rent is a little bit less. 
but uh, her lease would begin, I think, April 1st. And so we informed the office that they would be moving in over here. So we'll both be saving because of, you know, one rent bill, one electric bill, one cable bill for the internet speed. Uh, we will be in much better financial shape. I've been month to month, it's just been, I mean, you know, each month it's just been, I barely have enough money. I just have enough money to pay. Now, yeah, you do see me buying items from time to time and reviewing them or whatever, but it's because I got a hundred dollars, a little bit over a hundred occasionally from YouTube commissions, or I got, you know, it's usually 15 or 20 dollars from Amazon a month, or I sold something that I had, that I had purchased, uh, and I, I sell that, and most of the time it's something I wish I hadn't sold. Uh, and I just, but I'm making it month to month. Okay, when they move in uh, March 1st, I guess, uh, we'll both have extra money. So, God help me. My ex-wife uh, has a big screen TV and she has it on 24-7 and she has it on loud. Uh, I don't think that's going to bother me as, you know, but I mean, it's a lot of little, and of course she's my ex-wife. We've been divorced for 35 years, but naturally there is some painful stuff from way back then. And... If you hear that uh, Jim Howard committed suicide during 2017, you'll know why. Or if you hear that a man killed his ex-wife, they had been divorced for 35 years and he strangled her, you'll know why. I expect you to be on my side in that scenario. Not to come and break me out of prison, but to say, ah, it was his ex-wife, I can understand. Justifiable, perfect, you know, perfectly justifiable. So I'm actually uh, looking forward to the, the ex I'll have some extra money to, you know, to do some things with. And of course, you'll see the results of it because I'm, I'm not gonna be uh, going to Vegas or uh, taking a trip to Europe or whatever. I'll, be buying a bigger monitor or a better microphone or I'll be doing something. I'll be buying a better bras and uh, lingerie for myself. I, uh, so, um, now to, I may show you, anyway, oh, I've moved, I've started moving, I had moved my bed into my ex or to my grandson's room after he moved I moved I clean I had stuff stacked up here all kinds of stuff and I moved it into the spread it out and you know, had it on the I still do in there have to get it out on the closet in there I have stuff lined up where I can actually see what I have I set another computer up in there so all that's going to I have to do uh, make some, have to move that stuff out and move it in here and stack it where I can't see what I have or, or find it and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, do you want to see the room right now? Let's show back to you. Of course, I can't see what you can see because this is, uh, sorry to say, an Uber TV. This is a, uh, what do you call it, TV? Roku TV. So, 
here is my bed that's back. Actually, it's back where it, where it was, really. And that stuff hasn't moved. Actually, I can't show you too much because it's, you know, I've got a couple of tables in here, so you really don't see a big difference. I do need, oh, that's one thing I can get. I do need to get a a camera that I can remotely control, that I can uh, sit here and zoom in and uh, whatever. Also, I need a, uh, a camera with a viewfinder that flips around. So when I'm doing selfies or whatever, that uh, I can see what you see. So, politics. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. Um, well, let's go down here. I blogged about Donald Trump going to pick, uh, announce his Supreme Court nominee, and that's going to be uh, today at 8 p.m. if he hasn't announced it on Twitter. You know, when you announce a Supreme Court nominee or whatever, it's supposed to be, you know, th their family is there, you know, you announce it to the press and people applaud or, so you know, it's supposed to be with uh, Trump, you don't know, it's, well, you've probably done it by now because it's central time, it's 6, 16 a.m., so I guess he didn't announce like at 4 a.m. who the, who the, uh, nominee is going to be. I blogged about it uh, Donald Trump has an older daughter uh, Madeline Trump Berry I looked her, I don't know anything about Supreme Court, you know, whoever they whoever gets, I wouldn't know Whoever he names, I wouldn't know anything about it. I have to go. I would have to go by what experts and and factions and people like that. What they, you know, what they say. I don't know who's, you know. I just know the system is really screwed up. It shouldn't be a political thing. It shouldn't be. And I mentioned that before. I think I mentioned that in a video that uh, a judge. I don't care if you know if you're. A left-wing liberal judge, or if you're a Republic right-wing, you know you're a right-wing uh, Republican hardcore. Your entire family has always been Republican. I, you know, I I don't care. That, that shouldn't matter. <laughs> when you are the judge, when you are a judge, the decisions you make should be based, you know, strictly on what the law is. And I, you know, I can see. Say you are uh, a left. Let's say you're a liberal. You know, you're a liberal Democrat. Always have been. And if the law or whatever it is comes before you, and if it's if you object to, if it has something to do with restricting birth control or whatever it is, if it's something that, you know, you have strong, but it should be whatever the law, however it is written, is this constitutional? Is it unconstitutional? Is this in line with the, you know, it should be, and it shouldn't be, you should, you know, you should go home, maybe you could go home at the end of the day and think, you know, God damn, I hated to make that ruling. Oh man, did I hate to make that ruling. I just don't agree, but it should be, but it's not. That's not, the, and so we need to, we need to do something to change the system in that regard. I don't know what in the world we can do because it appears everybody, you know, even the Supreme Court, even the distinguished, you know, top of the, these are the, should be the best jurist, you know, in the land. Uh, the smartest, most educated, or whatever, Supreme Court, you know. Uh, and even there, it's fucked up, you know. 
fits right down the party lines. Well, I'm a Republican, so no, I am not ordering a re recount of all the votes in the state of Florida. I'm just going to give it to uh, President Bush. That's it. We strictly along party. Okay, all my Republican Supreme Court justices. Okay, that uh, fuck uh, the president of the you know fuck the American people. Uh, their vote doesn't matter. We'll just not allow a recount in Florida, and our man gets you know. And then I'm sure the Democrats have the same you know. And it should not be that way. But so anyway. Uh, Donald Trump has an older sister, and she's a federal judge in the third district, I think it is, judicial district or whatever. I looked her up, and of course, uh, uh, she's, a, she's a Republican. Uh, but I, I would hope, I mean, because of the thing that's coming, you know, coming, well, because of the, with Donald Trump, here we are, what, eight, nine, ten days into his presidency, and everything is going to hell. It's as, it's as bad or worse than we thought it would. I think we thought, okay, maybe he can make it six months you know, through his presidency before things explode. Maybe he can, you know, I don't think he's going like, to, that's what I'm thinking. I, I don't I don't see how he can make it through a term the way he is, that being the uh, five-year-old that he is, uh, having, I think, the uh, mental condition that he has. I thought, I don't think he can make it four years, but I didn't think that we would get to this point this fast. And I thought, too, he's, a, he's appointing the worst people around him. You know, that if he was with his problems, anybody see the Kane mutiny about the ship's captain, naval ship captain, and his crew mutinies, and uh, Captain Quigg, and I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but his, the people, the officers around him didn't like him, and they didn't really uh, work with him the way they should have, and I don't want to spoil the movie, but I was hoping that maybe Donald Trump, President Trump, would surround himself with some good people and that maybe they could moderate him and maybe they could help him and maybe they could take the burden off of him and maybe he would listen to them. But apparently, and apparently, well, not apparently, he is not listening to them. He is one of the worst, I mean, it was just, he should not be president of the United States. Uh, he just doesn't have, you know, what it takes. He has, everything that he has is the things you don't want the president of the United States to have. So, uh, but now he's going to today announce a Supreme Court, his recommendation for a Supreme Court. And I was thinking, you know, if he listens, you know, his, from, from what I could see, she has a distinguished judicial, I mean, uh, what do I know? You know, I didn't go to law school. I didn't, I didn't go to, I didn't complete college. Hell, I, I had to go to summer school for, you know, all, for four years during high school. I went to summer school every year. I could have graduated, you know, I could have gone to the auditorium and gone up on the stage and received my high school diploma. Well, I couldn't have, I wouldn't have got a high school diploma. The school said, you can participate and we will 
give you a blank piece of paper, you know, in the folder. Nobody would know, you know, it'd be a blank piece of paper. And you can graduate with your class. And then when you finish summer school, then we will mail you your real diploma. I didn't go to the graduation, of course. But I'm not a smart man. But, my God, how can... So anyway, I looked at what I, you know, a little bit about uh, his sister, and she looks like, so, and she's a judge, she's a federal judge in the third district court area, and uh, I hope that he listens to her and not to anybody else. Uh, I'm not sure he'll listen to anybody, but if he listens to anybody, I hope to God that he'll listen to his sister. But then I went to redstate.com. It's a right wing, and I've called, uh, actually, I call it a hate site, right wing hate site. Because in the past, when I went to it, and I'm, I go to all, you know, I go to, I don't just go to sites that I agree with. I want to get as much, I want to find out, and I want to find out what the other side, what their position is. So I try to take in as much information as I can. So uh, redstate.com is one that I would go to in the past, and it was hard to go to it because I would go to it, and they'd, they had their word processors or whatever set up, I'm sure. They never, they couldn't probably type a union person or union leader or whatever. Their word processor would change it to union thug. No matter, I mean, if, if they were, do, of course, they wouldn't do a story like that, but if they were doing a, a story about uh, carpenters, the carpenters union uh, in uh, Chicago or Detroit, let's say Detroit, since the city's in such terrible, the, the uh, Carpenters Union on Labor Day uh, went out and voluntarily, at no expense, uh, fixed up elderly and poor people's homes or insulated them or you know something like that. If they tried to do that when they were typing, when they put in union or whatever, it would be like union thug, uh, union. Uh, well, they could. They're that's. They never. And the same with teachers. Teachers. They they couldn't type uh, a teacher. It would be a teacher. You know something negative about teacher that was in the. So I'd go there and I'd be. Oh my God! You know. Of course I can. I can read through propaganda. I can. That's something that I excel in for some reason. I don't know why. It's not something that I. It's just something in uh, ability that I have. I'm glad I have it. But I can read through that crap and see. And it doesn't have to be that plain. It can be like a regular story uh, or a news report. And I can be reading it and I can. Okay, this, this isn't right. Even, you know, I can tell. Ability I have. Thank God for that. I don't have many abilities. Why did God give me that one? Why didn't he give me the ability to make money in the stock market or something? So, uh, so I'd come to redstate.com and I, I just hated it that they did. You know, they... They must be appealing to people who are really stupid. Even if I were, even if I didn't have that ability, even if I was a normal person, I'm not saying I'm better than you. Even if I was a normal person, I I think I'd be able to go there and say, you know, no, just give me the, you know, just give me the truth. Don't, don't do the, you know, don't do the propaganda. Just tell me, you know, so, but I'd go there and I'd have this. Well, when uh, Trump started, you know, when Trump got into uh, the campaign to be, become the Republican nominee, Red State uh, site was not 
they didn't like him at all. They just they ripped into him something fierce. And I was I was watching to see it. Then as he's moving up, they're still ripped. You know, they still ripped into him. Uh, they and they stopped. I, did, I stopped seeing all these attacks, not because they it was because they were taking up space with you know anti-Trump stuff. And even when he got the nomination, they were still against him. And even when he got elected, they were. But now, it's they. They're what are they going to do? They're right wing. He's their man. So they're still not. They're not happy. But I came over here, and they mentioned that about the nominee that Trump was going to. And they mentioned some people they thought it might be. And let's see, where is it? Oh, here. They they uh, they said something to the effect of, well, whoever it is, it better not be somebody that his sister, and what did they call her? Oh, it better not be somebody that, that, that Trump's sister recommended to him that uh, Trump's abortion loving sister so I didn't see anything you know she must have made some ruling sometime someplace and so man they you know but uh, so I blogged about that and then I you know I, I'm blogging that oh man this is he gets to pick a nominee for the United States Supreme Court who um, you know will probably be beyond the court he'll be on that court for 30 or 40 years uh, even if Trump doesn't make it through his first term or even if Trump just does make it through one term he is going to have a, you know a lasting effect on our system, our government, our laws, everything for long past uh, after I'm gone and long past after Donald Trump. Donald Trump's a few years younger than I am. I think Donald Trump's 71, I believe I'm 75. So, and then I took a nap and I woke up and Donald Trump had fired the acting attorney general of the United States. So Donald Trump has proposed, he's getting ready to propose a Supreme Court nominee. He has uh, picked who he wants to be attorney general of the United States and uh, Senator uh, who did the uh, who did he pick Senator Bold Regard Sterling St Steele what, what the fuck is his name anyway that's who he's, he's picked it and they've they held hearings and the Republicans all of the Republicans you, you on this committee senatorial committee they actually in the past didn't approve him for some position that he won this fellow senator in the past you know they, they uh, because he has some one of them is his name is Bold Regard Bold Regard Jackson uh, whatever it is from Alabama I, I don't care if you're if your parents named you Bold Regard you're from Alabama and you're going into politics, you shouldn't go into politics with the name Bold Regard, you know. Uh, it'd be like, you know, Robert E. Lee, uh, Bold Regard, uh, Sterling. I'm sorry, you just should decide to forfeit the... Same if you, if you're, uh, if, if your parents were hippie flower children from the 60s, and if they named you, and if you're a guy, and they named you Rosebud Brown or something or other. I'm sorry, you shouldn't go into politics. Uh, you should be disqualified. They should 
when somebody has a baby or whatever, you're naming a baby, the people there at the hospital or whatever should say, uh, do you really want to name your, uh, your kid this, really? Really, you want to do, you know? Trump's 10-year-old son is named Baron Trump. I think that's pretty neat. I should have done that. Well, my wife, uh, when I was married, she did the naming. Well, of course, for my own, for my one of my son, you know, uh, named after me. I was named after my father. And my father was named after his, you know. I'm James Joseph Howard the third, and my son is James Joseph Howard the fourth. Uh, but I think Beauregard is a pretty, or not Beauregard, <laughs> Baron. That's a pretty good name. I. Uh, I never thought of that, you know, I'd be like, Baron Howard. That'd be okay for grade school and even high school. And even uh, Major, you know, you, you could be Major Howard, being the, being the first name, you know. Uh, even Colonel might be okay. General wouldn't work out well, that, that wouldn't. Not for a kid in grade school or high school. Maybe in, in college you could be in class and they could, uh, teacher could say, Mary Brown, okay, you're here. Bill Smith, yeah. General Howard, that would be okay. So, anyway, uh, Trump, and now I just found out by going to the conservative site, and I haven't seen any place else, because they talk about it. Um, and this is unreal. And I'm, I'm sure that they get and because they're a Republican right wing site, not from, not too happy with, but they're going <clears> to. <throat> the House Judicial Committee. The staff workers there were contacted by the clique around Bush, around uh, no, around President Trump. The uh, oh, transfer team, whatever you call that. The uh, so a while back. The staff on the committee, the House Committee, Judicial Committee, they were contacted by the people around Bush, around Trump, to draw up this uh, executive order, you know, banning aliens, or whatever you want to say it does. This, the, the staff workers on this House Judicial Committee were contacted and it was like, Shh, we want you to help us draw up this executive order, you know, banning uh, refugees from Syria and Iraq and Iran and all that. We want you to do it. Don't tell your, don't tell the people that you work for. Don't tell the uh, judicial chairman or of course the vice chairman which would be a democrat you know don't tell any of these people and they had them sign a non-disclosure paper that they wouldn't tell anybody my god and so that's how because it, it, it turns out and I didn't find that out from this uh, redstate.com, but just from the regular, you know, CNN News, New York Times, or whatever, that uh, the Justice Department, uh, Homeland Security, uh, airport, or, you know, border security, all that, they didn't know anything about this executive order that was going to be released. It was secret. And so, you know, I guess the Attorney General's Acting Attorney General, I guess she's sitting at home. 
uh, or whatever. And on the news, it appears that it, this executive order has been put into, you know, put into effect. The order wasn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't written up, and it didn't go to the uh, White House staff, council, you know, legal counsel. It didn't go to them to be reviewed. Is this okay? You know, it didn't go over to you know such and such. It didn't go to, didn't go over to the attorney, you know, to the attorney general's office. It didn't go over to the Justice Department so that they could review it or whatever. Uh, Donald Trump just, uh, okay, signs it and it goes out. And that's one of the reasons there was so much problem with, you know, you know, airlines are with uh, airports and what, 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 uh, you know, what, what about green card? And I actually heard that, what about green card, people who have green cards and somebody calls to the White House and the White House, you know, actually the guy from, I understand the guy from Breit Hart, Bart, whatever the guy that, oh man, he is, he should not be allowed, he shouldn't even be allowed in Washington, D.C., but he's the Donald Trump's advisor. He's the right hand, he was, I don't know, I don't think he is, he's the chief of staff or is he, but whoever he is, he's the guy, the go-to guy. And I guess they call and somebody asked him and he's, yeah, don't let the green card holders in either. So, uh, I don't, I hate to see anybody lose their job, but you know, the Republicans on the House Judiciary Committee, they should fire every one of their staff, every one of their staff I'd find, that'd be, I'm sorry. I mean, I realize these people, you know, they're not, they're not making 200000 a year or, or whatever. They're, but they should be out the door for that, for that. Also, we can see that Donald Trump, now, even though, he, you know, he, he'd pulled that crap in the past of having people sign non-disclosure agreements or whatever to ex-wives and who, uh, who knows, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, hey, you get this money, uh, but you have to sign a non-disclosure agreement, and if you disclose anything, you don't get them. You don't get any more money. Plus, all the money I gave you, you got to get back. Plus, I'll sue you and all that kind. Of, so he's gonna he's contending the same. He just cannot and will not make the transition from being asshole real estate developer, asshole, uh, business asshole. Is there some way I can make double asshole? To being president of the United States of America. He just can't make that transition. And there's nobody around him that can get it through to him or that understands. So, uh, well, that's one thing the Republicans should fucking find. Now, the other thing, <coughs> which isn't going to happen either, it's kind of today, the Senate Judicial Committee, they already held the hearings for the man that Donald Trump wants to be his attorney general. And today, that committee is going to vote right down party lines, and the Republicans are in the majority, so they, they're going to vote yes to tell the Senate, yes, we have asked him, we've asked him questions and uh, <coughs> all this kind of stuff, and we think he will make, you know, a great attorney general. And then the Senate, right down party lines, they have enough, they're going to make him the attorney general. Now, because of Donald Trump firing the acting, to, you know, yesterday, firing late last night, the acting Attorney General of the United States. Now, they should, the, that committee today should meet, instead of doing the vote, they they should say no, and it would be the Republicans that would have to do it, and they would have to be, that they'd have to be communicating with and 
sending Donald Trump some messages, which I don't think he's smart enough to understand. But they'd have to say, no, we're not going to vote today like we said we were, you know. We're going to call him back. And when they call him back, then it would be uh, Senator, this executive order, do you consider that Trump, that President Trump has issued, do you consider it to be a legal constitutional order? And I don't know how good of a, a lawyer he is, but man, he'd be in a, you know, what would he do? Well, you know what he'd do. He's got, he wants to be, you know. What he should say is, no, I, I do not consider it to be a constitutional. I think the, the courts are going to rule that it is unconstitutional. They'll probably say that uh, with changes, part of it can, you know, be in effect. But no, it's basically, and it, was, it came about in, in a totally inappropriate way. Everything about it was messed up. So no, I don't consider it. That's what he should say. And then, of course, they should say to him, they should ask him, if you were uh, the Attorney General of the United States, if you had, who was, if you were uh, Sally Yates, if you were in her position, would you have ordered the Justice Department to file papers saying that this was legal and uh, fight it in the, you know, the federal courts or whatever. And in which case, then in which case he could say, well, I personally would not think that it was legal, that it was, con well, I don't see how you can say, I, I would, I was going to say that he would say, but I would go ahead and tell the, well, he could say, I, was, I would tell the Justice Department to go ahead and draw up the papers and everything to begin to uh, fight to preserve this executive order by the president and we would review the paperwork, let them gather all the information, do all the research, and, you know, he, he could do that and buy, maybe get, you know, but see, the Sally Yates here, she has been in the Justice Department for over 30 years working there and she was acting Attorney General for just a short period of time she was just holding the spot or whatever till the till, uh, whoever was elected the Republican would come in and then procedures would be to you know him to pick an Attorney General and then she would uh, move back down the line to wherever, you know, I think the first few people the president picks, you know, the attorney general and maybe as some associate, the ones underneath, I don't know how far down it goes, but she would have moved back to wherever she was and continued. But, uh, you know, Donald Trump orders her to say that his executive order is legal and for her to fight the, the court's cases and to uh, and she refused to do it and he fired her. If you're watching this, most of you probably don't remember when Nixon was president. And I can't even remember what, you know, with the Watergate and can't even remember what the issue was. But Richard Nixon wanted something, evidence destroyed or something. To, I can't remember exactly what the thing was, but he contacted the uh, attorney general who he had appointed. He contacted the attorney general and said, I want you to do such and such. And the attorney general says, no, Mr. President, I, I can't do that. That's not, that's not legal. It's not right. It's not proper. And Nixon said, you're fired. And so then Nixon gets on the phone, the next, the assistant attorney general or whatever, 
and orders him to do this. And the assistant attorney general, Mr. President, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. It just isn't legal. And he says, you're fired. And then he goes to another, down the rank, to another, uh, uh, you know, whoever's next in line, who probably nobody ever heard of, and orders him, orders him to do it, and he refuses, and Nixon says he's fired, and then Nixon goes to the next person, and the next person says, okay, Mr. President. And his he tells that attorney general, acting attorney general, says, tells the public or whatever, I, I didn't support, I, I supported the attorney general and the assistant attorney generals and whatever, and uh, but I did agree to go ahead and do it because we had to stop this, we had to have somebody left, you know, in the government. And so, but man, I really admired those people back then, the, the three attorney generals, or the attorney, well, whatever, the attorney general and the assistant attorney, I guess the acting or whatever, really admired them. And I didn't have any hard feelings towards the guy that finally said, I'll do it, because at some point, yes, somebody probably, you know. But, uh, and I really admire, I don't know anything about her, Sally Yates here. She's worked in the Justice Department for over 30 years, and uh, she did the right. She did the right thing. So, I think what I I'd like to see. It's not going to happen. I'd like to see the Republican Senatorial Judicial Committee today not vote to approve uh, the Attorney General, but to call him back and ask him some hard questions. And I understand he wants to be, you know, that's the problem you have. And that's the same with this House Judiciary Committee and those people. The transition team for Trump contacted them secretly and said, hey, don't tell your bosses, but draw up a policy to keep you know, keep these Muslims, you know, I bet that's if your truth is known, you know, to keep these Muslim terrorist jihadists from coming into our country, you know, like the five-year-old boy that got held for like eight hours at the thing, the lady who was coming uh, because her mother was dying, the, uh, the guy who worked with in Iraq with the United States military as a translator and who uh, got a green card or got whatever he needed for his family and for him to get out get out of there so he wouldn't be killed by the uh, the the MIT student you know they that was heading some scientists uh, and technicians that uh, are doing you know that all these people that were detained and prevented from entering for a while what a fucking mess. So I would like to see him call back the, what I'd like to see, but I know it's not gonna, oh, I was gonna say, those house, they need to be fired, but I know they don't make much money and it costs a lot of money to live in the Washington DC area and two, you know, the transition team, that's the people <clears throat> on the, that they're picking who's going to get offices, who's going to get positions, all these thousands of jobs that are available. And they contacted this, you know, Republican committee people that maybe make, you know, 30 or 35,000 a year. I don't know, I'm guessing. And they're thinking, oh, wow. I may be able to get a job with the Parks Department or I may be able to get a job in the Interiors Department or maybe I could get, uh, maybe I could be in a White House doing, putting papers in the shredder or doing, you know, maybe I could get it, maybe I could, you know, and that's what they're all thinking, but still they need to be fired. And the 
senatorial committee today and should not approve the Trump's nominee, you know, and they that would be, you know, or not approve him today, call him back for questioning. And what the Republicans, it's got to be the Republicans, and I don't see them doing it. They should be sending a message to Donald Trump. No, you know, your Supreme Court nominee may not get approved because you're fucking stupid and we got to teach you a fucking lesson. Got to give you some kicks in the, you know, the balls or whatever to get your attention. And, or, which is of course not going to happen. With Trump's attitude, you know, you can see that he has, that he, if he, I think he already has, and you know he's going to have a list, more than one list of people who he's going to fuck over. And two, if he can call up the attorney general and say, I don't care that you think that this is illegal or whatever, and if he can get get them to, or the, whoever gets the, the position now is going to know, well, Donald Trump, he'll fire me. So when Donald Trump or one of Donald Trump's lackeys, uh, one of Donald Trump's henchmen, when they call over and say, you know, there's this reporter for the New York Times, and uh, we'd like for him to have an IRS audit, or uh, we need to tap his phones, or we need, uh, he's going to be going over to Sudan to do news reports on, uh, on something, and we need a a drone strike to uh, take him out. I mean, you just don't know with Donald Trump, except, well, you do know that he's going to have a list and he just needs to be educated. He should have educated himself about the Constitution, about how our system works, what you can and can't do, and the proper way to do to do things. That's one reason it was a really bad idea for people to pick Donald Trump. You know, they picked, a whole bunch of people picked Donald, you know. There was a whole bunch of people who are Klan members. There's a whole bunch that are, you know, hate Muslims. There's a whole bunch of people that are really stupid. But of that 35 million people who voted for Donald Trump, they're not all that way. Not even half, you know, a lot of those people are just people who are, fuck, this system doesn't work. You know, my job, you know, I was, I was a welder making, uh, building railroad cars, and now the railroad cars are being built in China and shipped over here. I, I worked, I used to build uh, industrial gigantic trucks, and now those are being built in, I don't know where they're being built. I, I Both those jobs, by the way, I did for years. I built railroad cars and built gigantic trucks bigger than this apartment building. Uh, but there were plenty of jobs back then. Wasn't a problem, I'm 75 now though. But I can understand that those are a bunch of those people who voted for you know Donald Trump, but they didn't. And what they wanted was somebody who was not of the not of the establishment, not a Washington D.C. person. I'm sorry, we fucking need somebody who knows how a bill gets, you know, made. We need somebody who knows. Okay, I want to do such and such. We draw up the paperwork. Okay, send it to the the uh, White House counsel, you know, and rent by them. Okay, now. Uh, call in uh, the Department of Interior and the Department of Defense and uh, whatever. Run that because it's not, it falls under. The, run that. Pa- I want their input. Okay. Okay. Well, now uh, we need to do you know and who does who but not. We didn't get somebody like that. We got somebody who I don't think he. I don't think President Trump understands the Constitution. Understand. I don't think he understands how a 
how a bill becomes a law. I don't think he understands what he can do and what he can't do. And I think that, unfortunately, because the Democrats uh, fucking don't have any balls and can't get elected, uh, uh, I think it's, we're at the mercy of the Republicans. We have to hope that, okay, this is our man, our fucking party fucked up, and he became our nominee, and he got fucking elected, so he's our guy, but we have to educate this asshole. We have to show him that he is not the king, he's not the emperor, that uh, there are three branches of government, and the judicial is one that Donald, you know, Right now, Donald Trump is having a clash with the judicial, but I think he's also having a clash with the Republicans, and they're the ones that need to, to say to him, you know, okay, uh, your Supreme Court nominee, we're not going to approve. We're not going to approve him. Your Attorney General nominee, not, got, not going to approve him, and the only way we're going to approve one is uh, for, for you, Mr. President, to apologize to the American people. Can, can you imagine Donald Trump doing you know, to apologize to the American people for being so stupid? And, uh, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> we, we're having to depend on, the best thing would be for, not going to happen for, three Republicans or four Republican senators just to say, fuck, I can't fucking stay in the Republican Party as long as Donald Trump is a Republican president of the United States, so I'm a Democrat. They could still vote if they have strong feelings on something. They could still vote to uh, do things, but on some key points like Supreme Court nominee and things like that they could do and they could just send a message to right now Donald Trump thinks he's got it made. He's got a majority in the House, Republicans. He's got a majority in the Senate, Republicans. And uh, so he needs a dose of reality. So I'm not sure I covered what I wanted to cover. Uh, anyway, Sally Yates, you're, I don't know anything about you, but you're my hero. Former attorney, former acting attorney general of the United States, you are my hero. Uh, the Republicans really, the things they do, that's why I have no faith that they're going to do anything to help. We can't count on them at all to help. Our hands are tied. Uh, them refusing to allow Barack Obama to pick a, a member of the Supreme Court and then waiting the Republicans, that, that was really un-American, really petty, really wrong. Uh, our founding fathers, they set up a fantastic system which has worked really well but because of the internet because of right wing radio because of a whole bunch of factors that have all come together um, uh, our system needs to be changed things need to be fixed uh, corporations are not people uh, corporations and people should not be able to spend unlimited amounts of money. That's funny. The Republicans loved that court ruling that corporations were people and that rich people could spend all they wanted to spend uh, in politics, that there would be no limits on them because of free speech. It's funny. That's I don't think the Republicans understand. That's the thing that you know, the Republicans loved it. The Democrats 
all hated that and knew that it was wrong. Republicans loved it. But that's what fucking killed the, is killing the Republican Party. Because of that, when this election came around, you got people like uh, Rick Perry, former governor of Texas, who wants to be president and who is stupid. And even the, it's not generally known, but even the people back here in Texas, they weren't enthused about him at all. By the time he, they may have been earlier, but by the time he's getting ready and he wants to be the Republican nominee, they were like, oh no, please, no. But, so he had some donor who had a lot of money and, you know, so he had enough money, so he shows up there. And you have all these other incompetent idiots who uh, have a backer who has a lot of money. Otherwise, see, they wouldn't have been able to do it. They wouldn't have had it. They would have tried to raise money, and people would be saying, uh, "Rick Perry, I'm not giving you, you know, I'm not giving you any money to run for president." And so they wouldn't have been on the stage. So on the Debate, Donald Trump would have had enough money, I guess. We don't know how much money Donald Trump has. He hasn't released any financial information. I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Trump doesn't drop over. He's a few years younger than I am. I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped over dead. We don't know. He didn't He didn't release a real medical. We don't have real information about his medical condition. So we don't know what conditions he might have or might not have. But... What would have happened for the Republican Party is they wouldn't have had these flaky characters up there. So they would have had, I mean, Donald Trump would have had enough money, I guess, that he could have he could have been up there. But then you would have had, instead of having 10 or 11 Republicans up there, you would have had three or four. And Donald Trump then wouldn't have got, you know, the, the way it was with a, like 10 Republicans up there, well, so-and-so got, you know, 3%, and so-and-so got 2%, and this person got 6%, and this person got 7%, and then you get down to Donald Trump, and he got 6 or 7% or something, and so some of these other guys then fucking, you know, are so messed up that they're off. And then, by the, but by the time it happened, then Trump had, you know, they, these others disappear, you know, and Donald Trump is sitting there with getting increasing, where he wouldn't have it if there had been, who did uh, the Republicans run before? Anyway, you would have had those people would have got, they would have been up there, and Trump would have been down here because of his craziness and everything, and then he would have been out. But instead, the way it worked out is, he ends up. So, uh, so that ends up. What do they call that thing? I can't remember. Thing that allows unlimited funding. Whatever that hurt, they end up hurting the Republicans. Of course, the Democrats messed up. I, I voted for Hillary Clinton, but I didn't want Hillary Clinton. But, I mean, she was a Democratic nominee, so I had to vote for her. I would have preferred uh, Bernie Sanders. I'd have voted for him. Uh, I would have voted for Biden. I know, you know, whenever you're vice president of the United States, you're like, they make fun of you and you're, you know, but uh, I think I would have voted for Biden and I think he would have made a fantastic president. Both of those people, of course, knew you know know how the government works, um, and I'd have been open to somebody other you know than those uh, people, but we had Hillary Clinton, and I, well, I I I can't say that I don't blame somebody you know. I mean, I didn't want Hillary Clinton, but I had to vote. I had to vote for. Her. But I can understand Republicans and others not, not wanting Hillary. But I can't. I honestly cannot understand 
how anybody could vote for Donald Trump. I can't put myself, I guess, in a position of being a, you know, a lifelong Republican and being no way would I ever vote for a Democrat. And especially I would not, I, I especially do not, you know, do not want the Clintons around anymore. But I still can't see how in the world that a person could vote for Donald Trump. You know, the, the, the things he said, the things he did. I have a small hand. I mean, the things that he said and did are just... But that's the situation we're in. So today, Donald Trump will announce his... Uh, you know what would really be great? It's not going to happen. I wouldn't know. We wouldn't know anyway. Wouldn't it be great if Donald Trump would pick somebody? I don't know anything about the... The, the man that uh, uh, President Obama wanted. I don't know anything about it. I, there, I just don't know anything about judicial. I studied, I took a class in constitutional law, but I don't know anything about, you know, the... Uh, wouldn't it be great if that guy was... Actually, they said at the time that he would have been excess, uh, that Obama picked somebody who the Republicans should be able to go along with, that this guy did not have. This is somebody who the Democrats could say yes, and who Republicans actually should have been able to say, hey, yeah, you know, instead of, uh, you know, Obama didn't go for somebody that the Republicans were going to say, no way, you know. Wouldn't it be wonderful, but it's not going to happen, if uh, Donald Trump said, you know, I looked at everybody and I had all my experts come in and meetings were held and, every, and I talked to my sister, who's a federal judge, and they and my sister said that this one that Obama wanted is a good, would make a good jurist. So I'm nominating him. That would be earth-shaking. That would be, wouldn't it be wonderful something like that happened? It's not going to, not with Donald Trump. He will double down. You know, not only did he fire Sally Yates, a lifelong, you know, 30 plus years serving in the Department of Justice, but he fires her and then he says, he tweets bad things about her. And so, going to be an interesting day today. It, well, of course, the way Trump is, Trump is, I think the courts are going to rule that on this executive order that no, he can't do this, he can't do that, and so forth and so on. So if it turns out that like four-fifths of it is unconstitutional, but they'll, they'll say, but he does have the authority to do this much, one-fifth or whatever, then of course he, Donald Trump is going, to, he's going to be, he's going to circle everybody's name so he can get them later. But then he's going to say, yes, another victory for me, another... I am so, so, I am so smart. I am smart. I am really, really smart. And this is a victory for me. This is a really, really big victory for me. This is an unbelievable victory for me. See, I am right. And just like I was correct, and I had more people at the inauguration than anybody else in the past for all times, all, you know, I mean, no matter, he'll do that. And then that hardcore, I don't think it's the 35 million now, I think that should be reduced, but th there's that hardcore that's going to say, yeah, Trump, you know, USA, we're number one, Trump, he won, he was right. Anyway, uh, I want to thank you for watching the video. Since here in a month or two, 
Uh, I'm going to have a little extra money each month. I'm thinking about turning off the ads. I don't get much. I can think I get about thirty or forty bucks a month from, and they don't pay till from uh, YouTube videos. I'll think about it, but until until then, I guess I'll keep the ads going. Plus two, I don't know how much they owe me. Like I'm going to get money from YouTube like every three months because if it's like, you know, if it's thirty three dollars a month, they don't pay till you have a hundred. So it's. I make 33 one month, I don't get it. Make 33 the next month, don't get it. Make 34 the next, you know, the next month, and then I get a check for 100 you know, I get a direct deposit or whatever. But So I would hate to stop the thing and then have them holding, you know, $80 of mine. I want to make sure I get it all. But uh, if I stop the advertising, Anybody, but I don't think any of you are signed up for YouTube Red, where you pay ten dollars a month. I am, but that is. I th last time I checked, I get ten cents a month from that. If I turned off the advertising, I would still get that. But if all of you, if a whole bunch of you signed up for YouTube Red, but it, it wouldn't go, you know, because at YouTube Red money they take and divide it somehow equally up among I'm not sure how they what their formula is but they divide it up among everybody anyway uh, thank you very much for watching